crowd in raptures at what they've seen. It's been a marvellous night, and there's more to come. The highlights of these championships will be on at 10.50 p.m., BBC One. We hope you're going to be back. The fourth of our Olympic champions will be on view then. Steve Ovet, join us then. Welcome back to the Crystal Palace on this joyous evening where a packed audience have paid a handsome tribute to our Olympic team and their visitors from overseas. Three of our Olympic gold medalists have already been in action, but I'm certain there'll be a very special welcome to our 800 metre champion, Steve Ovet, who tonight moves up to the 5,000 metres and tackles the likes of Brendan Foster, Craig Virgin of America, John Tracy of Ireland, and Nat Muir, the Scot, who has recently run the third fastest time in the world this year. What a roar! There's Steve getting the roar he so richly deserves. He made a million friends in Moscow. Magnanimity in defeat at 1500 metres. Generous in the 800 metres. Steve Ovet wearing a Russian vest and the number 11. Craig Virgin just came over in a yellow vest. He wears number nine. Only Henry Rono has run faster at 10,000 metres. There he is on the right of the picture. John Tracy wearing 13, the Irishman who crosses himself as he goes to the line, who had that uh, disastrous 10,000 metres. He collapsed in the heat of Moscow. And incidentally, uh, as Steve Ovit moves onto the shoulder of uh, Nat Muir and the man taking the lead is Stevie Binns of Bingley, the youngster, with uh, Mickey Morton, another youngster, well, taking up the running. Let me say that it was a great disappointment to us all that we didn't have a finalist in the 5,000 metres in Moscow or the 10,000 metres, nor a finisher in the marathon. And that uh, there must be uh, some evidence that will feed back that uh, the team were having a bad time. Stomach trouble, one hates to make excuses, but by tradition, of course, uh, with, uh, with a marvellous strength in depth at those three events, but Moscow proved bitterly disappointing. So Mickey Morton moves on, John Tracy follows him, and uh, Nat Muir is in third. It'll be interesting to see what tactics uh, evolve on this race over 12 and a half laps. Mickey Morton from Blackburn, the national junior cross-country champion, leads John Tracy round. Nat Muir tucking in there. Brendan back in fifth place at the moment. Steve Ovet happy to be in eighth with Craig Virgin running alongside him. There's Virgin wearing nine. Wearing ten is Bill McChesney, the other very good American runner. 66 seconds for the first lap, which is uh, really rather slow. John Doherty, wearing uh, number six, moves up into third place on the shoulder of Nat Muir. And incidentally, uh, the last time that Steve Ovet ran over 5,000 metres was back in 1977. It was at Gateshead, and interestingly enough, he was beaten by Yifta and beaten with a sprint finish. McChesney wears 10 and goes onto the shoulder of Mickey Morton. John Doherty of Leeds City, a 19-year-old, moves up into third. The youngster's showing well at the moment. Richard Callan wears seven, the Leicester Coritanian, and still Mickey Morton taking the pace on. Although we were expecting something like 13.20 pace, it's been uh, a little slower than that, 2.66 seconds. And Ovet, comfortable at this pace, and moves... Uh, up with the leaders of course his range is from 400 meters to half marathon Mick Morton still leading Bill McChesney wears 10 on the inside wearing six is John Doherty then Steve Ovet with Brendan Foster trailing him Steve Ovet wearing 11 Brendan Foster wearing four just behind Brendan Foster, Steve Binns, the 19-year-old from Bingley, the inter-counties champion. And uh, it looks like uh, the tall figure of Ray Smedley, the Birchfield man, a most experienced man at 28, doing a run on the outside wearing 16. Two eleven at 800, 66 at the first 400. So they're lapping around that time. 
And if you remember in Moscow, despite the fact there were no British competitors in either final at uh, five kilometers and 10 kilometers, they were both fascinating races. They really were, everyone was glued to it. Brendan surging up and Brendan Foster takes the lead and gets the biggest cheer of the night. 3.16.3 after three laps. Brendan Foster in the lead. Ray Smedley is following him there. Then John Doherty, then Steve Binns, Mickey Morton on the inside, Steve Ovett comfortable, and Nat Muir looking well, uh, wearing number two. John Tracy still in that bunch as well. And one wonders how many more times we'll see Brendan Foster in a field of this sort as Ray Smedley takes up the running. Four laps gone. Meanwhile, there's a very good shot put in action and uh, a man who we've already paid tribute to this evening, Jeff Capes, in the circle. And he's leading with 20 metres and 55. That was his fourth round. Put 67 feet, five and a quarter. Peter Schmock in second with 20 metres, 20. This is his last round put. Attempting to... Oh, and he's missed it. And uh, a no put to finish the series. Not what he would have liked, but uh, nevertheless... He's now got to wait to see whether Peter Schmock of the United States, the man who won the Olympic trials, the American Olympic trials, that is, whether he can do, go one better. The athletes in this 5,000 metres have the length of this straight to go, followed by eight laps. And Ray Smedley leads. And Steve Ovett coming nicely on the outside. John Doherty still in second place. Obert's uh, gone into third. Bill McChesney's in fourth. Nat Muir tucked on the outside. Ahead of Steve Binns. And Brendan's gone back just a little bit. Coming up to the halfway stage. Steve Ovet, very comfortable. Very relaxed. Very easy arm action. Mickey Morton coming up behind him. Brendan still in fifth. And one wonders, uh, as I was saying before, just how many major meetings we're likely to see Brendan at again. He says no more major championships, but I'm sure that uh, he'll be out to get the crowds of Gateshead on their feet again. But remember, his remarkable career began in major championships back in 1970 in the Commonwealth Games, where he finished third in the 1500 metres. And he's featured in every major championship since and really has been the major British athlete of the decade of the 70s. Ray Smedley, number 60, as uh, Husby of Norway drops out wearing number eight. There he is, limping off the track. Sveer Ro Husby. Ray Smedley leads on Steve Ovet. Brendan Foster and Nat Muir having to do some uh, handing off as he comes around chasing after Richard Callan, who was wearing the number seven vest. Mickey Morton still up in the hunt. And this is a fair measure of the British talent we have at 5,000 metres, even though it wasn't displayed at its best in Moscow. And a lot of the, our boys out there were suffering from uh, stomach trouble. Steve Binns wearing number five, only 19, 13, 44.7. This year, 13.27.1 uh, in 1979, the European junior champion in 1979, a very bright future ahead for him. The 19-year-old lad from Bingley who goes into second place and takes up the running now. Steve Ovett matches him, goes past race medley. Brendan Foster does too. So does McChesney, the American from Oregon, who's run 13.18.6. Third in their trials as they have six laps to go. Ovett tracking. Steve Bint, and now the pace is spreading them out. There was a 65 and a 66 second. They're uh, on schedule for about 13.20 now, 13.20.25. And it's now stretching them out, a nice long line. Ovet still looks very comfortable. Ovet with a gold medal at 800 meters. To some uh, people's surprise, and only a bronze at 1500. He said afterwards he found it difficult to uh, to really raise his game again. The euphoria of winning the eight uh, was a, a magic feeling, but he couldn't get back up again for the 15, and it was a surprise for him only to get the bronze. But what a talent! That 63-second lap by Bins has uh, spread them all out. Bins still leading over it. 
Brendan Foster in third, then Bill McChesney, then John Tracy. Levis of France and then Mickey Morton. And uh, Bins is leading them a fair dance now. Brendan Foster happy at this pace, desperately disappointed with his Moscow showing. Wanted to finish his career in major championships better than that. Bin still battling on. Ovet still looks comfortable. Wearing 13 is John Tracy, the man who collapsed in the 10,000 metre heats. The Irish champion, an Irish record holder, 13.22 his run for this distance. He's the 1979 3A's 10,000 metre champion. And of course, twice winner of the International Cross Country Championship. John Tracy, who wears 13. Matt Muir is going back, and uh, really the threat from him. Uh, tens, looks as though it's dying. McChesney of America, wearing 10, now coming very much into the picture. And Ovid took a good look at the American Ben. This is the 21-year-old from Oregon. Third in their 5,000 metres trial, but uh, ran a 10,000 metres in 27.58.5 in Paris just before the game started. So McChesney, one of the men to watch. First five breaking away from the rest. And no real challenge from Nat Muir. Gone way back. Still Bins, then McChesney. Then Ovet, then Foster, then Tracy. And wearing 14 there is the Frenchman, Levis. Levis, who's run 13.41.1. There's Craig Virgin behind Nat Muir, so that American challenger has vacillated. And it's disappointing to see Nat Muir back there. We were expecting so much from the Scots cross country champion. Three laps to go and the battle unfolding. Brendan Foster pushing Steve Bins and going past him. Bins can't respond. Ovid does and so does McChesney. And Ovid looks cool, calm and collected. John Tracy going a little wide. Steve Bins still in the hunt. The, the American in the middle of that pack. Small and compact Bill McChesney, the 21-year-old American, in the middle of... Uh, with Bren leading on. Ovet in second, McChesney, Bins and Tracy. And then there is quite a long gap, 15 metres or so, before the rest of the challenges. What a night, everyone's favourite is up there. 65, 66 and 66, the last, uh, they're uh, running now at about 13.35 pace. And it still could be on for a sprint finish. Bins goes back in the hunt. Tracy goes after him. Brendan drops back. Ovid still motors very smoothly. He really looks superbly relaxed. Upright, comfortable, two laps to go. Bins, Ovid, Brendan, Tracy, McChesney. A little helping hand there, not a push, just to let the youngster know that he was on his shoulder. Perfectly poised. Ovid, what a range of talents. His personal best at this 13.25. McChesney's gone. Ovid tracks him. Tracy goes with him. Ben strolls back, but Ben tries to lift himself and goes after him again. Here's the American, Bill McChesney. Brendan losing a little contact. Three, four-yard gap has opened up. Bren looks over his shoulder to see where he is, but Chesney leads on, Ovet tracks him. Tracy tracking Ovet. Well, there's no doubt about who's got the sprint finish here. And Ovet saving it. McChesney wants uh, Ovet to go, and Ovet looks to see who else will take it. And Tracy says, I'll go. But McChesney goes with him. Now, that was strange, because he wanted somebody to go. And now they hear the bell. Ovet goes past Tracy, and on to the shoulder of the American. Bren's in fourth, but can't close the gap. Ovet, again, supremely poised. The American is punching fairly hard at this stage with 300 metres to go. The American looks as though he's going for home. Ovet still looks oh so relaxed. Tracy looks as though he's pushing a little bit. Ovet looks to see where the opposition is. Upright. 
beautifully relaxed. 200 meters to go, and one feels that there's only one man with a killer threat there. Ovid looks to see where Tracy is. McChesney and Ovid goes, has a look, and smiles. He's, Tracy's going after him. And he's got a race on his hands, and Steve's got to run. And it's done him the world of good. He's got to go for the line. Well done, John Tracy. And well done, Steve. Oh, and he's got it. And Tracy may have stolen it. He might just have stolen it, in which case Steve has only got himself to blame. It was a marvellous run. He won't begrudge Tracy, I know that. He'll not begrudge him, but Tracy, the mudlark, has sneaked it in 1327.8, and I'm sure he stole it on the line. John Tracy says, yes, it was me. What a way to finish the evening. Bryn says, what happened to you? And Steve must have thought that he had that absolutely sewn up. Marvellous run, a lovely race. But as they came to the line, let's look at it again. This is where Ovid had his nonchalant wave to the crowd. The race is his, he's claimed it. Tracy stretches his legs, looks awkward by the side of Ovid. Ovid has a look, where's the challenge coming from? Stretches his legs again and goes away. Now, normally that gap would open, it would be five or six metres, and now Ovid relaxes again because nobody generally comes back at him. But what about that? The torso on the line, if we inch that along, we can see that I think John Tracy got it. What a surprise. That is a remarkable run. Well, the camera's staying with Steve Ovette. It may take a photograph to separate them. It was a lovely incident on the line. The crowd standing and rising to Steve Ovette. They've seen the four British Olympic champions here this evening. And the man taking the lap of honour, John Tracy of Ireland. Well, he's our 3 A's 79 champion. He's had a few victories here, but I think he's going to relish that one. Absolutely marvellous run. Well, it's been a marvellous night of athletics and a fitting tribute to these athletes who've returned from uh, Moscow.